So I want to talk about a little bit of maybe a controversial topic or subject, and that is in the arena of vegan and vegetarianism. I know that there's going to be a lot of people that can defend it, that can say that their lives have improved because of it. So I'm not here to downplay that every aspect of that is bad for the body because there is moments and times that being more plant-based and away from meats and dairies can be very good for you. But there was an amazing study that was conducted by an incredible MD. Her name was Dr. Tasha McBride Campbell. And she wrote an extensive research project regarding feeding versus cleansing. And this for me was always the Mecca of data because she breaks it down in the way that the human body interacts with the things that we put into it. So when you consume plants, plants break down and convert into something called stearic acid. And stearic acid is only designed to be a cleanser. So if you're, in the, if you're in the need for detoxing your body and cleaning your body and purifying your body, doing a short-term temporary vegan or vegetarian lifestyle could be very beneficial because it will help remove and clean toxins. But in the repair and the rebuilding phase, the human body only responds to arachidonic acid. And arachidonic acid can only be given to the human body through the absorption of our meats, our animal proteins. But you'll find a lot of people jump on the bandwagon and say, well, you know, Jimmy, arachid arachidonic acid can be inflammatory. That in fact is true. So does that mean you should consume two, three, 400 grams of protein on a daily basis? No, but when you put in the appropriate amount of protein for your body, the correct breakdown of arachidonic acid will be the fuel that your muscles and your cells and your organs need. So in its most pure explanation without antagonism, because I do believe there's a time and a place, but ultimately, Plants simply break down to stearic acid, which is a cleanser. Animal proteins break down to arachidonic acid, which is a healer. And you can find this data and this information from a wonderfully educated MD, Dr. Tasha McBride Campbell, in her research project, Feeding versus Cleansing. But let's get a little firsthand exposure from people who actually diverted from a meat diet and went vegetarian and vegan. Tara and Maria are here to share with you their stories on where they were, how they got there, and then I'll kind of tie back into uh, some of the relationship with Tara and I when, uh, when I met her. So I uh, decided to go vegan um, for a couple of reasons. I had some issues I was dealing with, with headaches and bloating, mood, um, and knew that nutrition had likely had something to do with it. And the more I researched meat, conventional meat, um, I started to think, well, that might be a big part of my problem. So I cut meat out of my diet, I cut eggs out, I cut um, dairy out. Um, and I did better. I certainly did better. A lot of my symptoms had improved, but they hadn't completely resolved. Um, my bloating was definitely better. Dairy was a huge trigger for me there. So that is definitely a part of the vegan diet that's, you know, I agree with. Um, I had to kind of uh, put myself in check when I wasn't completely resolving my symptoms and the ailments that I was dealing with and start to question whether or not is it because I'm not eating meat at this point that now I'm not making more progress. So uh, once I started to eat meat again, which was challenging, it was really difficult. I I joke and say I couldn't eat fork and knife meat at first. I had to have it broken up into something else um, and, and make better choices in, in what meats I was getting. Grass-fed meat, uh, fresh caught fish, par uh, pasteurized chicken, pasture-raised chicken. Um, just had to make more ethical choices in what types of meat I was exposed to. And I really did. I just felt much better when I started adding that back in. I have a similar story. I was vegan for three and a half years. Um, I was an athlete. I was doing marathons. And what I found was I was feeling very tired and I had mood swings um, and I, certain things were better. I felt like maybe my skin was looking better, um, but in the end, I was just, I was tired all the time. And I came into Synergy and Tara was my practitioner and she said, I was exactly like you were. I want you to try to add meat and eggs back into your diet. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. It's gonna give me a stomach ache. I don't mm -hmm. think I can digest it. And they gave me some supplements to help me digest it and metabolize it. And sure enough, a lot of those symptoms of the brain fog, the fatigue um, slowly went away. And, and here I am now um, talking with, with Tara about how adding meat into your diet can be a good thing if it comes from a good source. So, you know, we're not talking about meats that have been, you know, raised and, and grade, grain fed. It's grass fed meats, um, you know, the healthy mm -hmm. kind of meats, the healthy kind of wild fish, the, the, the pasture raised eggs, that kind of protein um, added back into my diet made a huge difference. And, sure. and that was 
And that was one, you know, if you'd say argumentative point between Tara and I, when I met her, um, I find two questions that I need to arrive, that I need to raise when somebody comes into my, my office and says that they're vegetarian or vegan, or just even in conversation. There's two questions I always ask somebody. Number one, is it because you've lost the taste or the ability to process meats? Two, is it for humane reasons? Now I will tell you, I'm a fur father of four. You will never find a greater animal lover and a more appreciative person than, than I am when it comes to animals. So I can have a high affinity for anybody who would reference, well, Jimmy, it's very cruel. It's very, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's a disgusting practice. And I have no debate with you. I am in full agreement. And that was one of the argumentative points that I had with Tara when I met her was, she threw this China study in my face by Colin Campbell, who a lot of people hold as the you know gospel of vegan and vegetarianism. And I, I didn't read the whole book, but I did enough looking at it and I said, well, I got all this information on why they're demonizing eating meat and, and animal proteins, but I didn't see one thing in this gigantic book regarding God food, grass fed, humanely raised, hormone free, antibiotic free, steroid free cattle. And when I said that to her, she kind of looked at me like, I think he's kind of right. There's nothing in here other than demonizing of meats that come from the commercial industry. I agree with you. You were not designed to consume animals that live in pens that are pumped full of hormones, antibiotics, and steroids, and have a continuous release of cortisol into their body because they're sitting in pens and cages all day. So for the humane reason, I totally support it, but that's why it's important to get back to God food, not man food animals that were grazing on the pasture sides, they were eating grass, they were not eating GMO feed and corn and soy and things like that. So I agree with the position of ethical reasons. It should always be from non-commercial, non-big non -big box brand distributors and support local aspects in that regards. In the part like Maria was saying, she started eating the meat again and she was having a hard time digesting it. Well, there's a very simple physiological answer for that. And that is in fact, that your stomach is designed to be highly acidic. That is the way God designed us. Our stomachs were designed to break down not only plants, but animal proteins. But when your stomach is not at a certain acidity, about two or three on the pH scale, you cannot adequately break down and absorb your proteins. So when Maria made this shift, her stomach was probably a little bit more to the alkaline side, didn't have its ability to be fully digestible and acidic, because here's a little tidbit about it. If your stomach acid is at the appropriate acidity, if we extracted it from your stomach, it would be so powerful that it could melt and burn through steel. That's how strong your stomach acid is supposed to be. When that's lost, you don't break down proteins very well. So Maria is a prime example of getting the correct digestive enzymes into the body, reigniting the body's ability to produce hydrochloric acid, now you can start absorbing your meats. And I think we've seen that with you, Tara, because when I met her, I was like, well, I'm a meat eater, so I'm making my bacon and I'm eating this. And she's disgusted by it. Once I got her on a program and we started to support her body nutritionally with the appropriate vitamins, minerals, enzymes, she then goes, oh, Jimmy, that kind of smells good. And it took a few months, but first she started to have a better smell. And then it was like, well, let me have a bite. And it was one bite here, one bite there. It still probably took, what, three, four years to get back to red meat. Mm -hmm. But now we can we could happily say that we uh, we had her birthday a uh, month and a half ago. We went out for steak. I think you had what a eight ounce fillet. I did, and it literally took me four or five years after being vegan to even think about bacon or beef. I was able to get turkey, chicken, and fish back in beef and bacon. That took me a very long time to to start eating. It. And a lot of people, if they know me personally or what I do, they always think that I starve my wife. This woman eats more than probably anybody watching this. And we can very comfortably tell you we put down probably about four to five pounds of bacon a week in our house. So in summation, you know, don't take away any from that as being antagonistic or derogatory, because as I mentioned, there is a pertinent place for moments like doing a vegetarian or a vegan diet, but for the long haul, it is not, it's unfortunately not sustainable for optimal function in the human body. We aren't here to tell you what you should or should not do, but if you're in a quest for better health, and here's the, here's the definition of insanity, right? Doing the same thing and expecting a different result. So to have something you've never had, you may need to do something you've never done. So if you've been on a long-standing vegan or vegetarian lifestyle and your body is not performing for you in all the ways that you should, maybe there's a need to create a change. There's one other little piece of vegan and vegetarianism that I've always had a problem with. And that is that sure, we're gonna remove these meats from the diet, but then what happens and what is replaced in there for the most dominant substance, carbohydrates. If you watch any of the videos that I put out or pay attention to anybody 
holistically, they're going to tell you that the root cause of the root cause of all chronic disease, everything from heart disease, cancer, diabetes, arthritis, all stems from deficiencies caused in the human body. If you are not breaking down your proteins adequately, if you're not absorbing them, if you're not absorbing them adequately, you create deficiencies. And what causes more deficiencies than anything in the human body? Sugar, carbs, inflammatory substances. So I watch way too many people think that skinny is healthy, but their body is severely inflamed internally. Nothing will cause deficiencies and in inflammatory processes in the body more than carbohydrates and sugars.